Hi, I'm Dr. Candy Olson from Greenbrier Animal Hospital. We're making a video on tips how to take care of your cat at home. This is Tashi. She's going to be helping us with this one. And uh, this one is how to check your cat for ticks and uh, what the ticks look like. And basically, now Tashi's a very well taken care of kitty. She doesn't have any ticks. So we have some ticks in the jar here. These are actual ticks that we've taken off of cats and dogs in the last year or two. And you can see how they really vary. Some of them are barely the size of a head of a pin. Um, others are very light, large, short, fat. The big thing about ticks is that once they fasten on to your cat or dog or you, they take a few days to gradually fill up with blood. So that if you find a tick that's still flat, it's not all round like a little water balloon, uh, it, it hasn't been there very long and uh, hasn't had a chance to pass disease along yet. Ticks carry a lot of diseases, but they fill up with blood first, and then they inject any disease-carrying organisms that they might have, and then they drop off and go their merry way and lay a zillion eggs and, and more ticks come out of that. So that's the kind of process of, of things. If you do find a tick on your cat, you want to remove it right away, and it is important to, as much as possible, not to handle the tick at all with your bare hands. At the moment, our knowledge of tick-borne diseases is changing rapidly, but at the moment there's only one disease, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, that you can get as a person from just simply handling a tick that's carrying it. All you need is a little tiny break in the skin, a little hangnail, a little crack, and it is possible to get Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever from handling a tick. All of the other diseases, as far as we know, you have to actually be bitten by the tick for it to be transmitted. Nonetheless, it is an important thing to, uh, to be careful about that. Cats should be protected from ticks if they go outside at all, particularly in Northern Virginia, where we are. Something to ask your local veterinarian. But cats should also be protected from ticks if there is another cat in the household that's going in and out, or if there's a dog in the household that's going out because they can bring ticks back in. Unfortunately, unless you live in the far north, tick season is all year. Even in the wintertime here, we see fewer ticks. We see them every month of the year. These ticks were removed January, February, August, September, every month. When you're looking for ticks, you want to, uh, to do your touch feel is a whole lot better than actually looking. As you can see, some of these ticks are really small. So what you want to do is just use your fingers. Give a gentle massage, and if you feel a bump, a little bump, anything there, then you know part the skin and, uh, and go and look. I know, Tosh. Yes, we're doing nasty things to you. Now, say I felt a little lump and she had a little tick right there. Oh, it's all right, love. This is a, there's various tick removers. This is an excellent one because it, um, uh, it doesn't have any sharp edges. So even if it was right up here on her face next to her eye, you'd be able to take it off without worrying if she moved suddenly, you know, would you bump her in the eye? Tweezers are actually one of the worst things to use to take ticks off of animals because it's very easy to squeeze the tick or pinch the skin. Neither of those are good. And because they are sharp, if the animal moves, you can cause some damage. So something like this that doesn't have sharp edges is great. So if, if she had a little tick here, oh, I know, Tosh, it's all right. What we would do is part the skin a little bit, and we would just scoop it literally like we were scooping a scoop of ice cream. And the tick would be wedged right there in that, uh, uh, that little V. And if the tick is still alive, it'll actually take out the whole tick. You know, the mouth and the legs and everything will be there wiggling. Then what you want to do, yes, I know, we're not doing anything more right now. Then what you want to do is, uh, is just take a tissue and take the whole tick and flush it. This should be disinfected. When you're done with it, just with um, soap and water or alcohol, anything that you would normally use at home. You do want to make a note of where the tick bite was, and if there's any redness or swelling there, you should uh, contact your veterinarian. As far as the ticks are concerned, cats are prone to several diseases that are spread by ticks, and we're learning more about this all the time. So it's uh, new and breaking information, very important. In certain parts of the country, cats are prone to a very serious disease for, uh, that's carried by ticks, and so it's important to, uh, to check with your local vet about this. So that's the information on ticks. Next, we're going to go over uh, tips for grooming your cat with some special tools.